Oh, your, what, yes. what are you using to do the recording, by the way? Just Zoom. You can, so, like, where, where you, is you that can, on this? In Zoom, you can record on your computer or you can record in the cloud. The cloud fills up, so I tend to go on my computer. Uh, where is that? I'm not actually, I'm like, I'm looking. Oh, I, yeah, I think you might be able to do one yourself. Uh, let's see, you have to go to, um, maybe it's a more. Is it more or something like that? Okay. You see a more down at the bottom there? Uh, I don't actually. Is it Vance? Is it only if you're hosting the meeting? Well, it could be. I'm, I'm actually not sure about that because I'm always the okay. host and I've got the more yeah. button. But in other people's... Anyway, I'll, I'll, look, I'll look for that. We don't have to worry about that and say, as long as I know that you can do it, I'm sure. I was thinking you might be using Screencast-O-Matic or some no. external thing. So yeah. Right, yeah. right in Zoom. No, what, what, Zoom is really nice. Um, you, you watched Jeff's uh, session. I think in there somewhere he said that the, all you have to do, Jeff, that's Le, Jeff LeBeau, um, one of the earlier uh, webinars here in this series. And uh, Jeff uh, said that he just, uh, he'd set up his blended learning environment in Blogger. And then uh, he already had that running. And so then after that, he just added Zoom, he said. So. Okay. I see the record button actually on my screen, so I can see that we could all record. You can. You oh, can I do that. say that. All right. So chat, yeah. record, reactions. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, record up at the top. Yeah. But can you stop the recording or, I mean, you shouldn't have any control over I'm, that. I'm going to go ahead and click it right now to see what happens. Should <laughs> I? Yeah, why not? If okay, if it tears things apart, we can always put it back together. <laughs> no, again. It says, "Please request record permission from the meeting host." There you go. Okay, right. Okay, so it's just you. Got yeah. it. Okay, and I can flip over your. Uh, let's see if I go to your oh, where where I, uh, manage participants. Maybe I'll make a screenshot of what I'm doing here. Let's see. Here's manage participants, and if I go into where I'm managing you. Uh, oh, let's see. I have a, I have a more here. So well, I'll just make no, it. I'll, yeah. I'll make I'll a screenshot. Don't, don't interrupt your recording to, for me to experiment with that because I can ex experiment with that later. Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. Well, let me just click it myself to see. One of them is to allow record. So if I click allow record, that will allow you to make a recording of the meeting yourself. And okay. no hassle if you want to do that. I'm happy to. So, I mean, that is that you can be recording and I can be recording all of us, yes. anybody who's a host. I just clicked it. So okay. you can see what it looks like. You know. Okay. If you want to make a recording, it's up to you. You just have to record it on your computer. Okay. So it's recording now. So mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll let that go for about five minutes, maybe instead of doing yeah. the whole thing. Oh, cheers, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. If I knew we were going to do that, I would have gotten more than just hey, water. <laughs> I, I, just, I just have green tea here in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in Japan. Okay. Yeah. 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 Bonnie is a good friend of mine from UAE and uh, Bobby Kankini. I hope I did well with that. You did. Okay. And. Um, uh, Don is a friend of mine from uh, you, from Oman. We met in Oman, and uh, he's a, a an avid hiker. And Bonnie is a scuba diving enthusiast. Or that's I, one I was just going to say. I, I think I've seen posts about Bonnie related to your scuba trips. Uh, yeah, up in Fujairah. Or... Yeah. I think I'm more of a hiker than a scuba diver these days. Mm -hmm. But uh, one of these days, I hope to get back with Vance and mm -hmm. he, ice cream. Yeah. It tis the tis the hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we just <laughs> wine you know, and normally, ice cream. <laughs> normally we do these at uh, at ten o'clock, but well, I mean it's ten o'clock for Bonnie and I, and it's eleven o'clock I think for Dawn. Uh, ten thirty. Ten thirty. Ah. We're we're not recording yeah. right now, Vance Snow. Yeah. yeah, we are recording. Oh, now. oh, because I was just going to tell you, I watched this uh, this documentary this evening on um, a, an, an island in Greece and. W people have this amazing longevity and they interviewed this man that's I think 101 and he eats ice cream and drinks wine and he said that he was very proud of that so there you go I'm trying <laughs> I'm, you know I might make it I don't know yeah so 
Well, what, what you guys have in common, well, I mean, you know, knowing me, and um, I'm running this course right now, which is on blended learning. It's interesting, the course, it started from a bunch of workshops I did in uh, Thailand in January. And in those workshops, we went to, to the north, we went to Chiang Rai. And that university where we were has a lot of Chinese students and people were all wearing face masks. And um, people were quite concerned up there. But in Thailand, just walking around the streets, uh, a lot of people had face masks especially in Bangkok, and I went to a conference there, and, you know, so there was a lot of concern over uh, coronavirus at the end of January, and then this course started on February 20th, and um, it's in the back of everyone's mind, but it's only just recently, it seems, or at least for a lot of the world, that they are actually starting to cancel classes, and meanwhile, I'm running this course on uh, setting up blended learning environments. And I was mentioning that in one of our, uh, in the, the webinar that Don watched with Jeff LeBeau, uh, he's showing how he sets up his blended learning environments. And that having set it up, the transition for him into a completely online environment was quite smooth, it appeared to be. And well, I've kind of been thinking all the kind of, uh, like my university, a lot, well, a lot of the Asian universities are considering postponing the start. Normally, universities start here in April. Mm -hmm. You know, all the Japanese schools have been shut. All public schools are shut. Uh, they're considering uh, postponing the starts of the upcoming um, semester in April. Uh, some people are exploring this idea of saying, well, can we offer online classes? Certainly in other Asian countries, like in China, that's become almost the norm at universities now. Um, but I even heard that uh, the University of Washington, of course, they've had a number of deaths yeah. in Washington. Uh, the University of Washington has actually canceled face-to-face -face classes and going online. And Stanford is now offering online. Mm -hmm. Now, what I think in those cases, you'd say those students have in some ways already been engaged in some level of online. I mean, students in the United States, university students, are already submitting their assignments online. The idea of handing a paper to your professor, that just doesn't exist anymore. So in that sense, they're already involved with it. They're already using uh, Blackboard and these kind of resources. So it's just going a step further. Now, at my university, I was kind of thinking, like, even if I said, I think we ought to do that, or let's say even the university says we should do that. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what kind of legality is involved that. Could, could they, according to Ministry of Education rules, actually not have face-to-face -face meetings? I mean, we'd be quite happy to have the blended type thing. But just to say, we're no longer going to have students come into a physical classroom. I don't know if they could make that leap themselves as an administrative issue. Let's bring Bonnie in with her experience. What happened with you, Bonnie, in Hong Kong? Well, it's interesting that I, I'm hearing that I think we have an a extreme age difference because you're at the university level. That, that's correct, Don? Yeah. Yes. And well, I'm a university level elementary school mentality for the students. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I'm um, and I work in a, in, at the primary level. I am I teach a third and fourth grade. Um, so it's very interesting to hear what you're saying about the uh, the online learning with the the young adults, and I'm experiencing online learning, online learning with young children and right. even even younger than I teach because I'm I work with the team and we go all the way down to we're doing the e-learning all the way down to first grade so six you know six-year-olds yeah. so it, you know it's it's quite a quite a learning curve for us teachers and also for the students um, but yeah it's interesting that we are literally taking but, this you say, on but you say that the children seem to be uh very receptive of the tech aspect of it, or they're having problems as well? Uh, 
Um, you know, I think uh, the beauty of the international schools is children um, have, uh, like at our school, we are a one-on-one -on -one school. Uh, they have their own uh, iPads uh, all the way up through third grade. And then in fourth grade, they have their own laptops. So the, this kind of learning um, works very well for the international student that are already a bit tech savvy. It would be a whole different, um, whole different uh, lot of public issues school, yeah. if, if we were looking at public schools, if we were working at children that didn't have the opportunity to maybe have helpers at home or parents yeah. that are at home or, you know, there's a lots of different dynamics here, but we are definitely in an optimal uh, dynamic for this to take on this kind of learning. Now, by the way, this previous two hour Zoom was looking, it was, uh, interaction analysis of a student and a Western teacher at an international school in Hokkaido. So let's say, I mean, the age that you're mentioning was exactly the kind of age of the, the child in this. Mm. And I, you know, I look at them and I say, I can see that child being very, very flexible with, let's say, working with, a, with an iPad. He didn't happen to be in that particular thing, but quite certain they do have that technology in the school. Yeah. And another thing in the, but the demographics of, of my school, it's, it's a bit unique for an international school because we have over 40 different nationalities, but there is a common denominator in that all the kids are fluent in English. All. We are um, of, I think we have around 1,800 students, um, and we don't have a language acquisition department. I mean, are they coming into the school? Like, are they, for example... Are they entering in the international school as like kindergartners? Uh, not necessarily, but Hong Kong is, is very unique in the sense that it is a, it's a bilingual for sure um, upbringing for many of the, especially the more the children that have education. Um, yeah, okay. The demographics have started to change in the last few years uh, because we have more of a population of students coming from China. And um, that's also been an important factor in this current situation, is we do have quite a few children coming from China. But um, going back to the, the online learning, a lot of our resources are coming through the English medium, right? And so we don't, we, that's, that's been one obstacle. I um, mean, I don't know if that word obstacle is right, but it's one thing we don't have as much of a challenge with because we are able to provide everything in the in the English um, medium. And there's, so there's more of an access to materials and so on. So, what, what do people use in this situation? And, and by the way, explain your situation. You said uh, at Chinese New Year, which I believe was at the end of January, mm -hmm. uh, you people went off on holiday, I suppose, and just when they came back, they just weren't. Uh, um, they, there was no school. Right. It, it, it was a shock, yeah, to, mm -hmm. that we didn't plan this. But, uh, uh -huh. but the, you had to, so how did you do that? Yeah. So I, I think the, initially there was quite a high level of anxiety with teachers with, and with parents. Um, and we didn't know what was going on. And no, we weren't prepared. You know, the kids didn't um, have their computers. First of all, they don't take them home. That's part of our policy. Uh, so, you know, they all had to come up, uh, the parents had to come up and get the computers. Um, we, we just weren't prepared. So I, I'd say the first week, uh, there, like I said, there was anxiety and I'm kind of at the, at the second tier of a teacher, meaning I'm an, I'm a specialist teacher. So the class teachers took on the first week. Um, and we, the specialist teachers, meaning me as an inclusion teacher, the art, the music, uh, I don't even think the Chinese language teachers got involved the very first week. It was more just kind of troubleshooting, working out the quirks of um, implementing. Uh, we, I don't think, we didn't start with Zoom. Actually, uh, I think we just started, the kids were used to using Seesaw. So they were so comfortable with Seesaw and, and posting on Seesaw anyway, that it just, it just worked right away. What is Seesaw in a quick, quick, quick and dirty one? Is that just a sort of chat sort of thing? Is that like in the chat? It's a, how would you describe it? It's a, it's an online, um, uh, 
you could where the kids can post their work. They can they can use audio. They can use visual. They can use graphics. Um, and they and so the teacher will post the assignment via Seesaw. So they log into their Seesaw account, look it up, okay. and then when they're doing their assignment, like I said, they can use different mediums to answer. Um, so and then Seesaw is like S E E S A W Seesaw. Yes. Okay. And then when they post, and the teachers go back and um, before it actually posts, the teachers see it and then they approve it. Um, so what, what's nice about it is once it's approved, the kids can see each other's work. They can, um, communicate to each other. It's very popular in lower schools, um, across, I think it comes from the States, I'm pretty sure, but many elementary schools or the lower schools are using Seesaw all the way down to the little, the little people, um, I think five, you know, but we definitely, you definitely, I don't think anybody outside of the lower school uses it that I'm aware of. I think they go into different uh, uh, okay. things. That's probably why you haven't heard, heard of it because it's for the most of uh, the lower schools. I haven't really heard, heard of any of these <laughs> things. So, uh, you know, I, I say uh, Japan has a strange sort of culture of cuteness that can best be described as, as adults acting like children. I don't yeah, in a negative way. I mean, in that sense, like uh, the girls will dress in ways that look childish, and yeah. the the guys carry around little teddy bears attached to their briefcases. It, 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 there is that aspect. So they might not feel, let's say, but if seesaw has a kind of childish feel to it, they might not ma care. Whereas, for example. A group of students from Germany, for example, would say, "Oh, this is this is not mature. I don't want to play with this." Or, yeah, you. I think uh, I, I know what you're talking about because I see a little bit of that uh, here as well, and it's a kind of a wonderful innocence in some ways, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it, you know, it's more like just keeping a digital portfolio, so to speak, so it can be as mature as you want it to be. Okay. You know, so I think that um, I think it's used uh, in the international schools really uh, pretty much all over the world. So you are, you are in essence, uh, you started in Seesaw and then you added in Zoom. Right, because uh, we have been uh, really putting a lot of teacher training into uh, child protection. So we had to make sure that we were honoring child the, the protection of the child. And when you are doing, you know, Zoom, what are they seeing in your home? What are you seeing in their home? Who's seeing it? So we, um, we before we rolled out Zoom, there were guidelines for the parents and the students to understand of certain behavior. And then also for the teachers, um, obviously to be appropriate in your dress, appropriate and professional, but also um, no individual Zooms. I'll, I'll give you one one exclusion to that, but we are not allowed to uh, have Zoom conferences individually with children. It's more, there has to be a group of children, except for me. Uh, me as the um, special, uh, as a special ed teacher, my students have a, yep, that's Cecil. My students have a, a learning plan, a, a, an IEP, so to speak. And so they have special permission to have individualized Zooms but it has to be with the parent's permission and ideally with the parent in the room. So. Now, by the way, uh, so does Seesaw then actually operate off of this website that yes. Vance is sharing? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. It's great. It's really, really wonderful tool. I'm, I, I, I would encourage you to look into it because it's, it's, been a for this uh, even before the um, this online learning seesaw has been great but since then oh my gosh it has saved us because like I said the killed children were already very savvy with it so yeah. it it went it's it's happened relatively easily and now that we're into our sixth week I, I would say it's very smooth well uh, Vance or anybody here what what do you see as the parallel uh alternate sorts of uh, programs for Seesaw. For example, Schoology, which I've been looking at, is that also the same kind of 
I mean, obviously different ones are going to have different advantages and disadvantages, but if you're going to talk about a base software that you then add to, like she's talking about when he's using Seesaw and adding things to it, would it be similar to say Schoology and add things to Schoology? I think the difference with Seesaw and Schoology, uh, apart from their inherent dif differences, because Schoology is more like Moodle or Blackboard or it's, it's something that anybody can have for free. It's, it's quite easy to use, but it's a, a kind of a portal where you set up your learning environment. But Seesaw is something that the students were using already. In Thailand, where I was giving the workshops, they're using something called Line. Um, I'm going to ask Susan in a minute. Susan, you're muted, by the way. How are you today? Uh, she's also in Hong Kong. Uh, maybe there's something that do your students have a similar thing like in, in across China? It's WeChat, for example. I don't know. We've also got some other people here. There's Nergis Kern is here from Germany, last I knew. And uh, she's, uh, you're welcome to speak and show your webcam if you like. And, and uh, my beautiful assistant, Bobby, is also here. Uh, anyway, anyone's welcome to join the conversation. But Susan, how are you? Well, I'm okay, and sorry, a um, little late here. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, um, our school was introduced to another platform, um, but then by the time we were ready, oh, it's called Class In. Um, Class In? C-L-A-S-S-I-N? Uh -huh. By the time we were ready to demo it, um, so many people had signed on that um, they no longer had room for us to join. So I don't know if that's a... Uh, another option if they will grow and be open to other people later. So I haven't used it myself, but that was something we looked at for like uh, <laughs> one day, two days until they said, sorry, we are, we are uh, booked. So my school actually is only using Zoom and then whatever, you know, Moodle, whatever else that uh, somebody wants to add. Okay. okay, I'm having trouble Googling class and maybe you could put a link in the text chat for us and I'll try to hit it and share it. I'll see you. Can find mm -hmm. it. So, I mean, I can't really say much about it other than that was something that we did look at. Um, and hi, Bonnie, uh, somebody hey. else in Hong Kong. By the way, I, I don't, oh, sorry. Go, Go ahead. ahead. It's okay. Yeah, I, I was going to say that uh, line is the big, you know, the big thing for social media interaction with Japanese. It's mm -hmm. something that Ryan uses all the time. But I see that as it seems to have been primarily um, text messaging. I, I hadn't really thought of it as a platform that you could send, do anything else. So you said the students in, in Thailand were using uh, Line? Yeah, they're using Line. I hadn't heard of it when I went there, uh, but apparently it's kind of a WhatsApp for, uh, that's very popular there in uh, in Thailand. And then another one too is Edmodo, of course. Edmodo has been around for a while. That's a more social, um, you can uh, interact with your students, maybe in a similar way to Seesaw. I don't know anything about Seesaw except for, from what I just heard from Bonnie. But uh, Jeff in Korea is using Kakao, which I also had to look up. Gosh, there's so many, right? Yeah, but like Kakao, yeah. Cacao, when I looked it up, I found it was made by a Korean company, but uh, it, um, it's popular in Korea, but anybody can use it. Um, it's kind of in a way like Edmodo. So Edmodo is one that's, that's quite well known. I don't know if you have an account in Edmodo, or you might have a problem if you're not an educator. It you know, owes. Oh, uh, Don was having a problem with getting into Schoology for that reason. Yeah, but what 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 are your people doing? What, what are you doing, Suzanne, in your uh, in your environment? What are people? How are people coping with this? Having to go online, classes suddenly closed. <laughs> Tell us about what, it. What, where did it happen? Yeah, and what happened? Uh, what happened? Well, uh -huh. I mean, we've been through this twice, right? Because we had the same kind of experience in the fall term, where we <laughs> suddenly had to not have class, and at that point, it was more of um, uh, do whatever you can do, you know, just um, there weren't any specific directions. Teachers took a lot of different approaches. Some did recording, some 
some people tried Zoom. I mean, it was just a mixture. I can't even really tell you what everyone tried. But when it happened in the, the spring, so we were Chinese New Year, and then the announcement came out. And my school actually announced fairly early that we would be closed through um, Easter. Um, what, what level are you teaching at? I'm teaching at a, a college that, a small private college that focuses on um, training early childhood education teachers, so kindergarten okay. teachers. So okay. we're all, our students, you know, are 18 on up, you know, we can have um, adult students, you know, 40 years old, 50 years old, whatever. We can, most of them are probably like 18 years old, but um okay. the range Thanks. and the, the difficulty for us right now is that um uh the one thing they can't do is go to practicums to do their practice teaching in um kindergartens and so uh, a lot of things about our our schedule has been changed and consequently a lot of things about assignments have to be changed because if we start out with the original assignment is to do an observation of a child well there's there's really no children to go to a school and observe so we have spent an awful lot of our time and it'd be interesting to hear if bonnie's having much of this too but it seems like we spend a lot of time in meetings trying to you know look at like the um, course intended learning outcomes or look at the you know the, the course outlines to see what are the things that we're supposed to be accomplishing and then trying to figure out um, how to do the same kind of activity um, in another way. So instead of having a class observation, can they watch a video? But you know, some are field trips. What do you do yeah. if your um, course actually says you're supposed to have a field trip? You know, there, you know, museums are closed, places are closed. Um, another thing is group assignments. So um, that has, I mean, a lot of we've had some issues with people. You know, students not as keen on doing um, group assignments on, in this yeah. format. Well, I've, I've been uh, teaching a class on child language development. And initially, what I wanted people to do the first time I taught the class, I wanted them to uh, identify a child, and to, like I had a little information sheet about that child, a little picture of the child. And they were supposed to be doing these kind of observations on the child. And then it became clear that well, given the, the paucity of children in Japan, that many people didn't actually know. Many of, you know, many of my students, again, were like 20, they simply didn't know any child or there was no child in their vicinity. So I ended up moving on to having them uh, like watch YouTube videos. And I'd say, well, find a child that's this age and make the observations about the video. So that's my first little move for me into something that was like online teaching, that they were then watching videos and then sending me emails about videos. So. What no. I didn't know, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, Barbara posted that, yeah, they had no notice, just, you know, they were told to stay home. And it happened for us over Chinese New Year. So I actually had to make another trip into campus because all my teaching materials, my attendance sheets, all of the things that I needed were still at school. Um, so, you know, that, that's been disruptive in a way that, you know, not having resources, I'll say students not having printers, um, they don't have the ability to print at home. So they have readings or they have notes, you know, these you know, university level, they should be printing PowerPoints or making notes on it. They're, that's their usual practice and they can't do all these things. So, you know, it, it's, it's not just the software, but I think um, what I've noticed very much, it's like all of those extra things that you sort of take for granted because they're always that. there yeah. and then suddenly they're not there. Yeah. Uh, Bonnie, sorry, what were you gonna say? Um, well, gosh, I, I can't remember uh, exactly, but um, where was I going with that? Well, one, I think that the dynamics are very different from the older student and the, and the younger, of course, um, because we have really tried to impress well-being uh, and balance with all the way across the school from the young to the little. Get out. Don't sit on the screen. You know, limit your screen time, yeah. um, this kind of thing. But 
that's very that's much easier to do when you're a smaller child and your your parents hopefully are supporting that. But the the older kids, the closer they are to going to university, they have a, a very big weight because they're they've got exams, they've got college applications. And I think that's probably where most of the stress lies. The most of uh, you know, our counselors are all uh, have all kicked in. They're offering counseling across the school. I, I don't know personally what they're doing because it's you know that's very confidential. But I can tell you they're very very busy. Mm. So um, you know I might be living in my little elementary level bubble because you know they're smaller children. But the the problems the you know we've the depression, the anxiety, the the worry. Um, is big with the bigger kids, you know. Yeah. So. Well, and, and certainly by the time they're our age, you know, because um, they're, they're parents and maybe their parents who are trying to study at home while their children are also yeah. at home in these tiny yeah. little Hong Kong flats. And, yeah. um, you know, the other thing with our classes is it's a three hour block of time. Yeah. And students usually have two, three hour blocks a day. I was just so I starting just, off already yeah. with like six hours of being in an online class in a day. I had just written down in my notes, like, what are you guys doing in terms of, like, you, in essence, are still having a fixed class at a fixed schedule that everybody joins at that time. I think that's what I would have to do, but it seems like, Vance, you're sort of talking about classes where people don't have to all be working together at the same time. I'm not, I'm actually running a course where I'm trying to help people with blended learning environments and it suddenly became very relevant uh, as people are having to, um, uh, you know, do that. And so I'm, you guys are very uh, insightful as far as what other people might be interested in. We don't have a lot of people coming to the Schoology course to uh, but what, actually the way the course is set up, it's not really a course that I'm teaching. It's a course where it's following on workshops that I gave in Thailand. So it was set up as a consultancy. So I w I'm not really supposed to be teaching classes. I'm supposed to be yeah. interacting with people. And that's, uh, and I'm getting feedback on the, like, like this webinar we're doing right now only has the four of us here plus Nergi is in Turkey, by the way. She's coming in on the text chat. She's teaching Chinese students in Turkey. And, uh, and Bobby, my wife. So, and that's it. So, but, but it could be that uh, I'll post this on our archive uh, and I also put it on Facebook and places like that. And people will come along and probably make comments. And obviously, I'd, I'd actually like to hear from Nergi is why she is interested in this. She must have a reason. And if it's uh, if you'd want to, Nergiz, you can just pop in. I've known Nergiz a, a long time in the. Uh, there she is. Hi, Nergiz. Yep. How are you? Uh, so I'm missing somebody. Yeah, here, it's so. been a while, Vance, but I've I've been following things online, and I actually wanted to hi everyone else as well. Um, oh, hello. I um I studied blended learning in my MA course. But it's been a while, um, and I was just interested in looking into it again. And um, I started another course offered on Coursera, and I looked into yours. And uh, this email popped up yesterday. And because I have students from China, not right now, I teach in the UK, by the way, uh, UK universities in the summer. And um, they're all a bit worried because some universities have a high percentage of Chinese students. And you just talk about uh, the exams that they have to take soon, <laughs> mm -hmm. which will then allow them to get a visa to, to come to the, to the UK and to study on these precessional courses. And if they're successful, then they can stay and study on their MA courses. Or, um, yeah, it's mainly... Um, master students so but exams are not taking place the British Council's IELTS it's, exams are not taking place so I'm sure some of the students are worried as well well we're, oh, go, go ahead. Yeah. What we're doing to accommodate for that is um, there is school is out for sh till April 20th however our grade 12 students uh, have the option 
to go in. So with the, the EDB guidelines, strict educational bureau guidelines, they have to sit, I can't remember the exact spacing, but they have to be spaced apart. And if they're taking their exams, they have to wear a mask, which is provided by the school. Otherwise the masks are optional, but they are at least, they're not mandated because we, we can't do that. Some kids are out of the country, but at least we're giving the, so the opportunity or the option they can do e-learning or they can physically go in to the school. The grade 12 teachers are going in. Uh, some of them aren't happy about it, but they are going in. And then um, now we're rolling out grade 11. So, um, you know, because you're right, the, the kids, there is a, a great amount of stress about their future. You know, they're worried. Exactly. And then uh, was the pre-sessional courses, um, they, you know, if they, if they get delayed, my thought was some of them might be thinking of offering maybe the induction week um, sessions or probably the first week online. That would be a relatively quick thing to do. Uh, but uh, normally pre-sessionals, we, we do have Blackboard and, or Canvas and these kinds of tools, but they're not really used a lot for the course itself, except if the teacher wants to post some extra materials and stuff like that. Mm. I guess mainly because students come to the UK, they want to be in a face-to-face -face classroom with their teachers, and it's, it's a very intensive course. But uh, I know at least of one school, or one university that is offering a kind of blended course where they start before they come to the UK. Um, and then there is, a, that's Southampton University, uh, the language school, and then Sheffield, the language school of Sheffield University. Last year, they developed um, a fully blended course, pre-sessional -pre course, because they suddenly had so many students sign up and they didn't have the capacity, the classrooms, so they had to come up with a solution and they developed this course, which I think they're going to teach for the second time. So there are some schools that are experimenting with uh, blended learning and I'm, I'm very interested in blended learning. I have developed ESP courses in the past. So this is for me a doubly interesting session. <laughs> if the I can understand, I can see how it could work for the age level that all of you have for the humanities, but what would you do, and even maybe for math, but what, what about the sciences or something that you need a lab or, or more hands-on, how, how would you roll that out through the e-learning? And I think, I think what, um, you know, I, I've known Vince for a long time and not to say that I, you know, I'm, I'm really, really proficient at any of this, but at least I have experimented with many apps and many different activities, and I've tried a lot of things during my time teaching. I think um, what I've seen a little bit among colleagues is, you know, at the university level, it's more lecture-based, and I think that has been quite difficult for people who are uh, more used to delivering in that way. Now, in the classroom, face-to-face, -face, they're getting a lot of those clues you know, is the student paying attention and, um, you know, walking around, maybe having some group work, some small conversations, that kind of thing. And it's been very difficult, I think, for some people to make that switch in the, the you know, they have the materials already prepared, they're used to that mode, and then here now you have a three-hour block online, and uh, like, yeah. you know, many people do, they just put their name, you don't see the pictures, you know, for whatever reason. And uh, as it's been quite challenging, I think for those who have had no experience and they've been thrown in the deep end and, and basically have to figure out how to be more interactive. Mm -hmm. are, you, are any of your institutions providing tools? Uh, I mean, there's, I suppose, uh, the one you mentioned, uh, Bonnie, the, the, what was it before class in the, What's your tool? Um, that, was, that was something that my school looked at for like one day um, mm. because really we didn't have anything. We have Moodle and then um, what, what was decided is they would um, prepare a Zoom for all of us. But bas basically when we were small, we have one IT guy and it was we had received the link and where the instructions go teach. <laughs> I don't and know if more than that. Uh, 
Yeah, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I mean, there's uh, ongoing emails of uh, companies that are are really trying to capitalize on this new mode of learning. Um, you know, we're getting all. So, are you receiving these too? Uh, you know, I really. Purchase- I- I received one from uh, Socrative today about, you know, we, we can help with your online learning. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yes. I, Many I'm, of them. Yeah. And we will offer you this free because, you know, we know that there's this, this you know, uh, coronavirus thing. But you know what? It's a hook, right? They're, they're trying to it, – it, there is a business to be, to, to be started, to be made because we, this is something that – could be the future. Another thing that I, I have noticed with, uh, you know, we are an IB school. And so, um, you know, uh, we what, really, what does IB stand for? Um, International Baccalaureate. Ah, so, okay. it, yeah. And it's a certain, there are certain uh, key concepts um, and mindsets to the IB uh, education. And one, you know, part of that is being adaptable, open-minded, um, you know, so, Gosh, if this isn't a great way to practice what you've been learning, is that you know we, you know we, none of us can control this right now, and we didn't expect it, but this is when we pull out, pull out our big guns, and let's how we work together and we handle this, and um, you know I I think it's there's so many silver linings right now, uh, at right. all uh, all age levels. If if anything, maybe to take a pause, reflect. Uh, calm down. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of lot of really positives here, and I think we are the we are a lot uh, who the ch- the kids look at, how we react, and how we present ourselves. So it's it's a pretty powerful uh, lesson in itself. Just going through this, uh, which is going to be a big big check mark in history. You know that yeah. these kids have experienced. Uh, one of the kids called it the because. Uh, <laughs> coronavirus you know a little guy said uh what is this korean war virus <laughs> because yeah. that's the way he heard it but you imagine i mean this this is very very new to uh i, I saw, I saw a quote by somebody in china that's like an educational consultant there and he was saying this is simply the biggest experiment in online education and even mm-hmm. after the crisis is over maybe we won't go back to as much you know the brick and mortar classrooms. Yeah. It's definitely there's a social experiment to look at here as yeah. well, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Although you know, like I, I look at this and I say the class I'm interested in possibly pursuing this in is basically a sort of content. It's an English medium content class. You know, kind of about the English language as a phenomenon. But I honestly I can't at this point imagine anything that would actually be like an EFL class online without that just turning into a kind of teacher fronted situation, which I, you know, like, how do you do pair work? How, how do you do group work? How, how do you do all that sort of communicative language learning? I don't want to stand in front of a blackboard writing grammar rules on there. So it's interesting that you say that because I, I do teach English at the school and I'm teaching all writing classes this term. And the majority of my classes have more than 30 students and yeah. we need to do you know, things like peer review. And, right. you know, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit with thinking about how can this work when students can't print and they're not turning on their cameras and some of them may have poor internet and they're dropping in and out. And, uh, you know, in the classroom, there's some elements that are just so much easier, say, bring a hard copy, <laughs> sit with your partner and talk about yeah. it. Later. And uh, I think with the class size, it does make it more challenging. So um, if anyone has any good ideas about how to share uh, written work in a peer review situation, I'd be quite interested right now. But, well, I, uh, I, I, do, I do think the idea of using Google as yeah. a way of, yeah. Google Docs as a way of, People yeah. putting up stuff and having the peer review. I can imagine that happening through Google Docs. Yeah, yeah I've, I've actually done that with my um, summer students because, you know, one thing when you do, we teach academic writing um, and obviously we do in class, sometimes they have to just write a paragraph or something at the end of the class and then there is peer review. But there are sometimes issues. One thing is, for example, some students need more time 
to actually write their paragraph. And then once they've written it, they, ha they can't read each other's handwriting. <laughs> so I often do that, although our classes are not blended, I set up Google Docs and share it with the whole class. And I tell them after class, so during the class they start writing, I help them, I monitor, I help where they need help. And I say, look, now you go um, home and you finish your writing and then I assign groups in class, but you can do that online as well and say, okay, you give feedback to this person or to this group. If it was a group writing task, one group gives your feedback to the other group. And if it's individuals, they just, uh, they, they know their partners. And in Google Docs, you can, firstly, they can read actually <laughs> what's written and they, they can leave comments either within the text or, you know, you can highlight a word or a phrase and you can just add comments. So it actually works much better with that than in a, in a, it just, a traditional uh, way in way in the classroom. I I enjoy I enjoy Google Docs very much. Um, so dealing with you know ninety, you know ninety students in the cohort, and having to deal with all you know if they're giving me links or have it's. I just I was really I, hoping I to that, find yeah. something where I didn't have to do all that administrative stuff. I mean, if it's just one student sending the link to another, that you know those two are exchanging. You know that that is one thing, but um. I can't even imagine that how how that must feel because um, I have m many less children than that, and what I have noticed is a back and neck and shoulder uh, spasms, and I feel like I'm getting a mushy bum because I feel like I'm sitting so much, and my my eyes just on these Google Docs, you know. And I don't have 90 kids. I can't even imagine how even that must be. Than, I have more than 90. That's yeah. just one class. I teach three yeah. classes. That so. is so hard on the body and the, and the eyes. And, and that is probably one of the downsides of this kind of learning is, uh, the, you know, for, for the kids and for, for the students and the uh, teachers, we are sitting a lot. And it's so important to... I've now started keeping my yoga mat um, on the floor next to the table here because I realize that I need to get up and you know just do some shoulder stretches or something because the tension is and, and 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 maybe at home also it's not ergonomically designed for to be working you know uh, yeah. we um, were prepared. It's good that you mentioned that. I was chatting with a. Uh, uh, a colleague at another school, just you know, checking in. How is your school handling this? And uh, as we're chatting, and you know, he has a fancy green screen behind him where he's got you know different movies, waves coming. And he had a. I I noticed suddenly he was moving. He had like a standing desk. He had, you know, this whole setup in his office where he could do online teaching quite comfortably. And I, you know, I think like what you said, I'm not prepared. I wasn't prepared in that short amount of time. I didn't have that home office. Actually, I was, I was thinking about that just as I was looking at the different people here and actually in my last interaction and looking at myself on my own screen to say, is there going to be some advantage in preparing something? So for example, uh, having a, um, you know, like a blank background. It doesn't have to be a green screen, but like just a piece of black cloth or like if we look at the faces here, well, you know, Susan, you have the best lighting on your you face, just to, just to see you most clearly. And maybe Bonnie you, is- yeah, No, I'm sort I can of, be in I'm San Francisco of, right now. Do you see? <laughs> I'm in San Francisco. I, I just mean, for example, like <laughs> my face, my yeah. face, you're kind of seeing this sort of, Usually, Great spot you're not seeing this. Yes, I look like, like you normally because during the whoa, day, Bonnie. I'm coming in the window. So what this is what I see the kids doing. Uh, they're on Zoom and they have they they could care less what the e-learning is about. They are having so much fun putting the pictures. Um, there's a I, I I don't know how you can do it, but you can put your hand up. Do you know how to do like? There's a um, little icon here on Zoom that if you want to speak. Uh, you can put this little hand up somewhere. I don't know where it is, but um, yeah, the, I, I think if we really were to get into this learning more, we would need a, some more tools. I, I saw a teacher in the UAE who comes from a, uh, a school with good, good uh, equipment, 
she um, she has a uh, like a Dwight, I guess it's the virtual screen where she can like be standing in her home and doing a lesson. It looks like there's a screen behind her and she's writing on it. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, we weren't prepared. But if this is truly a kind of learning that's going to go forward, I think we need some some tools, more yeah, tools. Like, I, yeah. like people that uh, make YouTube videos and are kind of serious about that, they have set up a, you know, a little home studio. They have a good microphone. They maybe are not wearing earphones. Um, they, you know, in that sense, they have a more professional setup to create a better looking video. Now again, it, like it's again one thing here to, you know, we're here for an hour or something, but let's say if you had to be participating with a teacher over an entire semester, I think I would expect something that looks more professional, you know, like, uh, let me just ask, I'm just curious here. So again, Bonnie and Susan, where is the light coming from in your rooms? During the day, it's coming from my window. So I have like the half face thing. I no, but I mean, you, a lot about blocking, but it's over, it's above and overhead. Yeah, thing. me too. Because <laughs> no, it, it's cloudy. My, it's mine, is, mine is an overhead, typical of most Japanese, Japanese room. There's like a lantern type thing up there. And that's the only light in the room. Um, but it's like, I feel like I would, if I was going to do this, uh, seriously, I'm over semester, 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 semester. Maybe I'd want to get myself a little desk Vance, lamp. Vance, uh, you know, yeah. put it here. Vance is set up with a nice desk lamp there. He has a nice glow to him. With the well, I, you know, sometimes I see this doing this, and most of the light is actually coming uh, reflected from the screen. And I, again, don't think that's optimal in terms of people following you. Well, we all could have our pajamas on below the camera as well. You know, like the thing is, you don't can stand up. I don't want to see. <laughs> you know, wait, wait, yeah. What do you mean we could? <laughs> uh, but it is, it is, you know, when you know uh, you have these these Zoom conferences first thing in the morning, I notice that my, my rhythm is a little bit different now that I'm working from home than, you know, the, the normal. In fact, uh, I think for the first few weeks, maybe three weeks, whenever I didn't even put any makeup on. I just, you know, I just same person yeah. that I yeah. look like when I wake up in the morning, but usually when I go into work, I look a little bit more presentable. So yeah. I often have students, I have students that, that wear masks always. I mean, they've like I have a student, I have not seen her face in four years. She wears a mask every class always. Yes. But I used to ask about this and, and a couple of the girls have admitted they just don't want to put on makeup in the morning, so they wear a mask. We are a mask-free school. The kids are not allowed to wear masks normally. Um, I mean, this is an exception this time, but otherwise, uh, we, our policy is if you feel the need to wear a mask, you should not be at school. So, I, right. uh, well, we, we, we had, have, had students in Kuwait. Of course, you know, they'd come with a full veil, and you'd say, I cannot teach yeah. somebody in a full veil. Yeah, you know? that's we different. You know, we currently have the requirement you must have masks, but it's funny. I've, I've worked in Hong Kong long enough. I was here during SARS, and so we also had the mask. And at that time, really, um, when classes were canceled, classes really were canceled. We weren't mm. doing anything online mm. to speak of, but uh, there was an increase in eye makeup after that <laughs> because it was like the only part of the face yeah. when students were coming to class. This is interesting. Uh, I, w I lived in Taiwan during the SARS period, and um, it is interesting to see the difference uh, now between the two uh, very critical times in this part of the world, especially. Um, I think the reason why people are wearing masks more and they're more anxious is this, uh, the SARS had a, a massive impact on, on uh, you know, here. But I, I look back at that and I'm like, how do we survive? <laughs> I mean, we didn't have uh, all this, we, school was just out. Right there, I I don't recall any learning. Right, there wasn't very little. Yeah, yeah, there wasn't anything. So I mean, we're just in such a different time period now than when was SARS two thousand two, I think, or three three something. I mean, you know, look at us now. Uh, I don't know. In some, it's a blessing in many ways, but it's also somewhat of a curse. <laughs> you know that we feel like we have to be, you know, on it all the time, but. And I, w I wanted to say something. I think another difference between Bonnie's situation and my own 
is with adult learners. Um, they may have a class, but you don't actually know where they are. And they might be out in public transportation. I've had students when I'm, you know, trying to get the participation and calling on them and asking, you know, oh, you know can you share your file? You know, things like, oh, I'm in the supermarket. I'm at a restaurant. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, I'm out. I'm working. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I'd almost feel that if I was going to have a class and if they were going to be required to meet at a specific class time, that I would want to try to say you must be in a physical place. Like you can't be in a restaurant. You can't. But uh, that was, they, they did have class at a specific time. For example, like my classes are from one to four. And right. still they were out and about and doing other things. And, you know, they don't have the video on and, you know. You well, but, so then since they're out and about, I assume they're actually participating via their phones. Yeah, their smartphones. Yes. Right. But you can communicate with them one-on-one, -on -one, right? Uh, or well, we're also using Zoom. I mean, so. But is it more than one person on Zoom? Uh, or do you ever. Like 33 at a time. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Do they use that hands up signal? Because how do you, how do you not, how do they not talk over each other? Um, but they, I mean, I, I think, um, I mean, and this has been, I think, uh, difficulty for the students being forced into this situation quite quickly as well is that um, they'll log in and have just the name showing and then they may not say very much. I mean, so I've had to do things like when I start a class, I usually have like a beginning of the class activity and then a middle and an end. So I've used Zoom polling or I've used Google um, Google Forms and I've tried to do something so that at different points yeah in the class they have to respond and i do a lot with the chat box so you know regularly asking a question and you know everybody should answer but you know it's hard to keep them engaged in the same way as you would if you were sitting in a class with 30 people now this is, this is a real sort of practical how does the software work but for example right now at the top of the screen i've got four boxes now i don't have uh so we're missing somebody here. Uh, is is Nergis, Is she still in video? I'm so, here. for example, yeah. So, for example, it's only displaying four boxes on the top of the screen, and I have to click on the blue arrow to move over to the participants. So, if you've got thirty people, you've just got like like this much of them, and the others are off screen. So what I'm saying is they're not arranged in like a, you know, let's say a circle around the screen or anything. No, it's, but, but I think I can, view. You can, oh, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's your uh, view. So you, okay. you can click on speaker view, right? I've just clicked it now where I've got four across the top and I see Susan there. And then uh, I'm not sure if it's changing it in the, in the, uh, in the video that we're recording that has its own a mind of its own but uh you can change that so you no, can what would 30 students look like yeah well you wouldn't see 30 students unless yeah would you see their names though would you see well, only their names okay. well, you, you could, they there... could log in with some other you know like i did an activity with, with student i also do language support which is quite interesting um but uh, yeah, somebody logged in with oh. the name Frog, you know, so it's like, I don't really know who it was. Bo Bobby, uh, I saw Bobby write a little note and I'm kind of curious about this as well, because in, at, the, at the level I teach, um, it's been very, made very clear that we, there are, we're not big on grades. An IB school it, it, the, in the lower level, we don't do grades anyway. Uh, but Bobby asked what about, would, would, kids some kids be more um inclined to cheat this way but for the level that you have if you have a student that's maybe not strong would would cheating be easier when you're working away from the school that's a very interesting question because actually today um you know a student did the private chat with me to say that in the morning class with another teacher that a man appeared in a female student's 
uh, login. And so I did talk with the student and she had somebody else sitting in the room with her, she said to help her with the class. And like a tutor or I, what? I really didn't get all the details, but you Ooh. know, it, it, I think what you're saying is, is I mean, and again, we're, we've been focusing a lot on assessments too. You know, how are we gonna do quizzes or online writing tasks or things like that? And uh, there could be somebody in the room. There could be other people yeah. giving advice, giving support. And we, we I don't. think Vance, you were talking about students in the UAE, uh, just maybe having the older brother or somebody else simply do the work. Well, you know, I mean, if people are trying to educate themselves, if their attitude is that they want to learn, they're not going to cheat. So if they want to cheat, they can probably do that, whether it's face-to-face -face or online or whatever. But point. as long as I've got the <laughs> mic here, I'd like to ask Nirgis something because uh, I, I'm familiar with her expertise and it's another, it's an, another kind of uh, online environment. She's, she's quite proficient in second life. And I don't know if you've been doing or anything like that lately, Nirgis, but um, that's another, that, that's a kind of environment that would lend itself quite interestingly to uh, online classes, you know, or any sort of avatar world where. Um, what is that? Second, second life? Is, is it life. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a 3D virtual world. So just imagine um, a video game, but you're in it and you're just represented by an avatar, by a figure, and you can walk around, you can meet people, you can visit different worlds. And um, I haven't done anything recently, but I've written about it because I experimented with it and, and taught English in it. And I had participants from all around the world um, and they could either participate uh, in, in so you can speak, you can hear each other, but you can also text chat. Um, and I think that's um, one way of because you were all speaking, talking about, you know, you have three hour sessions, for example, and it's difficult to keep the attention of the students. Um, and you're just sitting there in front of the screen. But in, in, in Second Life, you, you feel like you are in, in a, in, in a, in a world where you can move around, although you're still sitting. <laughs> um, so I thought that would be much more engaging than just using video conferencing tools like Zoom. I could see that by what I'm looking here on the screen, I could see how kids would really love this. So if you're a kind of a shy, uh, reserved person, you could also kind of be, live vicariously through that avatar that you chose? Yeah, is that absolutely so because yeah you can choose the avatar you can sorry sorry so sorry let me just get rid of that okay yeah. mm -hmm. you can make it like yourself but you can also just look like teddy bear or whatever yeah. you like you know? yeah and in my class because the classes i taught because um there was no assessment it was it was just experimenting some students for example didn't want to use voice but they could still hear everybody and they could participate with text chat and others uh, they participated fully with with voice and so on and you can do lots of projects and activities for example in one session they had to build things because in second life you can actually build anything you want from very complicated things like houses or worlds just very simple things with blocks of um, let's say like Lego. And so we had this short project where they could build things. And then there was a session where they had to present what they had built. It was in a garden and they could present to the others what they had built and how they had done that. So for children, obviously Second Life is not for children. I was there, I was gonna ask that. Yeah, but there are worlds because in Second Life, unfortunately you have, um, you have adults and also sometimes adult behavior. You can have mm. people be naked, well, for example, as you know, the, the alternative to Second Life that Vance has been guiding is Minecraft, yeah. which uh, you know, it's, it's very much focused on children, although it seems to be like adults might enjoy it. But to me, it, it is a environment that would be more specialized and you can have a private, you could have a a controlled server where people have to be whitelisted and the behavior is regulated. Um, um, well, there are a lot of 
um, virtual worlds now. Um, you can also, if if you have the capacity and the, the, the te uh, technical knowledge and so on, you can set up your own uh, virtual world based on Second Life or other virtual world tools. But um, you would need a lot of time and you'd have to, it's a steep learning curve. Also for learners to learn how to operate in this world, those who are used to playing these kinds of games, it's easy, but um, it's, it's not something you can suddenly start doing, you know. Whereas video conferencing is quite easy to start if you're, like Bobby was saying, or like you are in this situation now, you're told from tomorrow you have to teach online. Uh, this is not something you can do uh, with the virtual world. It's, but it is definitely something that uh, if you plan it in advance, you can do. And there, there are tools for schools and there is a lot of research and there is a lot of support if you're interested in this kind of thing. You know, last last year at the Jolt Call conference here in Japan, they had uh, there was one presentation by a guy that had uh, basically was doing his PhD research based on bringing students in uh, to a, I don't know if it was Second Life, but it was you know one of the virtual worlds, and uh, as sort of the summary of his presentation, he said, "You cannot assume." that just because they play video games, they're going to enjoy that ex environment. Particularly, it's sort of the classic thing, if I tell you you have to do it, you hate it. Mm. Um, so that, you know, he said there was a certain significant number of his, uh, his students that simply hated the experience of that. And if it's self-selective, that's fine. You'd say, as an additional thing, we'd like you to go to a Second Life or Minecraft or whatever. But if you say the class has to do assignments in that, I think you find real resistance. Yeah. The interesting thing about Second Life is you can set it up as a class. I mean, we've had conferences there. There's a, a Second Life Languages, SL Languages conference going on for year after year. So it's quite interesting when you have people who are proficient in that environment uh, and uh, the thing you can do you can do you can put up projectors you can put your powerpoints on projectors or people can, can display videos there you have seating for people um, and it's quite interesting I think you know and, and I, I like Second Life uh, just to go and meet people it's a, it's a space that you can go and uh, interact with um, your peers or people who were other educators. It was an interesting space for that. Uh, one of the cha one of the challenges that uh, we have to to consider when we go more to e-learning is that uh, the different modalities that of way people learn. Uh, you know, not everybody is their style is to uh, sit at a computer. Uh, you know, when we're in a regular school, you know, some kids are more physical learners and some are more kinesthetic learners, but this, this kind of learning is not really honoring the different styles of a learner. Um, like for me personally, I don't like technology. I don't find it fun. Um, I don't like TV. I, it's just not my thing. Uh, for me, I'm a very, I need to be active. I need to be moving. I, I, I'd much rather be out side uh, learning than inside any day. So how do we, how do we um, respect those kind of learners when so much is digital? It's, it's, it's quite a challenge and I'm, I'm a bit afraid of what we're creating for our future. And of, if, I, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, if I could add something to that, um, it's, it's a slightly different idea, but then I also worry about access because uh, it's not only maybe a student's preference, but then, you know, which students do have the phone packages where they have unlimited data or yeah. how many yeah. of them for financial reasons really relied on the Wi-Fi at the school to get a lot of things done because they don't have um, really the money. To have Very them. much true. Well, I've, I've, I've brought, uh, you know, like activities where I wanted the students all to use their smartphones and they all have smartphones. But it was very clear that uh, some of them were very resistant to the idea of using their phone and I guess amounts to their data mm -hmm. for my class. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. 
Wouldn't you yeah. think that if, if, if the Ministry of Education, let's say, said, or a school, we are going to use online or blended learning, that they'd provide these packages or the technology so that there wouldn't be, yeah. you know, the, I the, think the, the, certainly long term, but in this kind of situation where it's yeah. like, you know, tomorrow, now everything is online for two months. I mean, I, I do worry. I mean, even the people at home. Um, how many people have access or must use the same computer? You know, does the whole family sure. have a laptop? Or, yeah. you know, and yeah. everyone has their own classes or their own things to work on. If you have more than one child in the family, yeah. Um, or even where where is that computer? You know, do you have it in your own bedroom? Is it it's in the living room? In, yeah, the television. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I thought even w with the um, you know with the dynamics that I have with the, in a, in a elementary school of or anyway in a, in a not in a university level put it that way there's so many things to consider what the kids have at home some are from a single parent home um, some are in a Hong Kong housing of 500 square meters some have bigger homes some have helpers some have good parenting some have absent parenting I mean there's so many different dynamics that when they when they're in the school we can look for, we can help them we've got counselors and but when they're on their own at home um there's a lot of factors that we can't help with um and it's it, it, it that's another challenge i think um yeah how to make this I, work i mean i i earlier i read uh, the article that i think vance you linked to it in your documents um uh, editions on edition.cnn.com um, and I could see the differences because it said uh, there was an example of a child in China sitting in front of the screen from morning from seven o'clock until the evening and then there was an example from Italy where the girl was actually quite fine because she had her uh, online classes but then she every day she goes for a walk yeah uh, so that's it's a completely a different experience well, even like even the idea of saying, well, if other students are seeing you in your video, uh, you know, they can be making judgments about uh, your house. Like, oh, you know, you, yes. look poor, you look poor, you look rich. Is there... And even us teachers, by the way, I, I mean, you know, I like to say that I'm not judgmental, but I, I have noticed like, I, you know, some kids I'll see in their house. I'm like, oh, my gosh, there's not a single thing on the wall or. Uh, yeah. It just, their home looks so sad, like, you know, uh, we, uh, we'd be liars to say that we're not somewhat j judgmental, you know. Um, in, in, in Japan for years, it's been the tradition that uh, like elementary school teachers actually visit the homes of each one of their students. You know, you're given a day and appointment and the teacher comes in and sit and you provide tea and a little conversation, but it's supposed to be for the teachers actually to see what homes the kids are coming to. But I, I don't even know whether that is a, an appropriate yeah, level of information for the teacher to have. Exactly, because everybody lives differently, right? And, and in this modern world, especially, we have you know, so many different home dyna dynamics. But uh, uh, as Vance, you put that up, I know there was a recent article about uh, the ADHD kids that are our home and they have attentional problems and this is just this is really tough really tough what is this that you're saying i see a, uh that we're looking at yeah it's uh it's uh, let me just uh pop out of this this is on my course uh the course is at uh let's see there's a link up here at the top somewhere oh it's a uh, tinyurl.com slash blended2020. And ooh, a lot of scrolling there. I know Don really hates pages with links. <laughs> <laughs> and but, it's like uh, my students could not even begin to have the, the reading scanning skills to get through something like this. That's all I, I'm just looking at it from the perspective yeah. of my students, so. I don't know what the alternative is. But I, I agree with you on one level, but on the other level, you gotta put something up, so, you know, what yeah. can you do? But anyway, this is, this is where you get to the course. Right now we're in week three, so if you go to the sidebar, you can find week three here somewhere. Um, I, I can't see my sidebar because 
Uh, her faces are covering the videos it. Videos on top. That's right. So, week three, if you go to that course, or even if you go to pbworks.com, uh, workshop, yeah, workshops 2020.pbworks.com, that'll take you there as well. So, we're in week three, and I was looking at uh, um, uh, more links here. Okay, so what if your school closes? That's what we're doing right now. What if your school closes? And uh, there's uh, some resources that people have put up. That's great. This is, a, yeah. this is an email I got from Edmodo. You said you were getting emails. Well, I got one like that. And mm -hmm. this, this is kind of interesting. Lucy Gray has put up a document where she's uh, trying to crowdsource with people. People can join the document if they want. So that's kind of interesting. Now, and, by the way, this is again a very practical matter for mm -hmm. like Zoom here and sharing a screen. Do you tend to, if you're using this, like in a formal kind of teaching situation, do you get all of your ducks in a row, for instance, like you have Sometimes. all your ready? Yep. Say, because again, it's very confusing to me, and I'm sure it'd be confusing to the students when you have to like, you know, when the teacher is going to look for something and then it's like, well, no, it's, you know, opening up that folder and closing up this folder and searching. And even having to like, scroll up and down in a document, I think a lot of students will get sort of lost in that process. Yeah, th this was another tab on my computer. Usually my ducks in a row are all tabbed. So yeah. if I want to go from one thing to another rather than saying, okay, I want to, here, you can click on week three. There's week three right there. And I just go and hit the uh, the thing I just had up, you know, in the in a separate right. tab. So yeah, that's that's one way to uh, handle that situation. Yeah. Okay. I'm hearing a lot of different words to use for this, like we say, e-learning, online learning, blended learning. We're calling it home learning. Um, I'm I'm assuming blended learning means the same. Is that the same as online learning? Uh, but then you meet uh, together, well, like what is that? The blended is, by definition, if you if you Google it and you go into Wikipedia, it says it has to have a face-to-face -face component. So what you're trying to do with blended learning is you're meeting a class face-to-face, -face, but that class itself has the benefit of your web presence. So um, instead of going into class with... Um, handouts and working from a textbook or whatever, you work from a web page where the students will go to the web page in, in the class and they'll, uh, you, you can set it up where um, you can put everything that you're going to do with them on the web page and then they can go to the page for that day and they can find it and then they could have done this the night before you could tell them to go in advance and then it's getting into flipped learning the flipped classroom which are uh, both of them they're, they're not they're different things flipped learning means you uh you set your class up so that you do actual you you go to the top the peak of the blooms pyramid uh during your class time and you have the students do the tutorial stuff in advance <laughs> blended classroom can be similar to that but blended classroom is more classroom oriented, but uh, sorry, a flipped classroom is more. Or, uh, but anyway, basically, blended learning means uh, assumes that you have a face to face class. Face to face, so but not necessarily you're all in the room physically. Yes, well, you would be. You're you're oh. you're you're meeting in a, a brick. Some people say there's a brick and mortar component. Okay, so that means okay. that it's for people. Like when I did my workshops in Thailand, I actually met those people in the workshops. Okay, so that was really a blended learning environment. Now then, they asked me to teach a blended uh, about blended classrooms in an online environment. Okay, so. Uh, is the, the idea was that I was supposed to meet the same people that I had taught in Thailand. Uh, very few of them actually came. There are one or two. But uh, it's turned out to be an online course. So it's not really blended, but it's about blended. And, the, and Jeff LeBeau in that uh, thing that Don watched and mentioned earlier in the interview I did with him, and he just popped by, by the way. He's an old colleague of mine. All of these people here are old friends of mine. They just make my... Uh, courses in the webinars work but anyway he just popped in and showed me what he's doing with his students in Korea because he has a, 
a, a long experience in online environments. He set up uh, communities of practice for teachers, um, some really interesting stuff. And he's now he's work, he's in Busan, Korea, and he's working with students there. Um, and that's what he does. He's just uh, working at the university, at a university in uh, Busan. And so he sets his classes up in a blended environment so that when uh, he meets the classes, he has all these online components. I mean, he does like, uh, has cooking classes with them and they in their kitchens. They show how to prepare food and they, you know, they all meet together and they giggle together and all that sort of stuff. So they're really kind of interesting uh, to, to see how he interacts with his students, not just in classroom, but, um, you know, there's a, there's a course there somewhere and it's meeting in a classroom, but he does all this other online stuff, which, uh, you know, contributes, uh, like you, like you mentioned, bringing people in on Skype or whatever, uh, you know, all the, all the layers you can add on to a face to face classroom. And so when the classes stopped, all he had to do was just, like he said, just add Zoom. So he just does, he just goes to Zoom, but he's already got his online environment, which is, that's kind of the point of my course as we've hit this juncture with the coronavirus, is that blended learning, learning how to get a grip on that is very important because if you can set yourself up so that you have an online component to your classes, and even that goes to Second Life, for example, because the way you learn about Second Life is you go into it and you meet people there and you start interacting there and then you start learning about it. Or in Minecraft, we, we, that, that's the whole point of the Minecraft course, whether or not you have students in Minecraft, you go there and you learn about it and you meet people and you interact there. And then you, now that's one of the tools, that's an arrow in your quiver, you know, so uh, you might be able to use it at some point. And as, uh, yeah, like, as we hit these, like, mm -hmm, go ahead, Don. I was just, just going to say, um, whether something seems like, you'd say, what counts is online learning? Now, um, like another class I teach is discussion skills. Mm -hmm. And it, it, primarily academic discussion, but there's a few other things. But in that sense, much of what we do in the classroom isn't all that different than what we're doing like right now in Zoom. Mm -hmm. So you could almost say, I could replace what I do in the classroom with what I'm doing here in Zoom with the chat, you know, you know, like instead of the blackboard, people type stuff there. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't consider that, it's like, yes, it's online, but it's not different in kind from what I would be doing face to face, mm -hmm. as opposed to the other kind of resources that you've been talking about. Now that would be, I would almost say, well, the Zoom could be the face to face thing, and then the other resources, that's the blended learning components. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, technically, it's all online, but... Yeah, I think, uh, not I think, there are different definitions of blended learning. The one that Vance mentioned is um, the white, most widely used face-to-face -face component and online component. Mm -hmm. And But you can say you can also have a blend of synchronous meeting like we're having now and an yeah, asynchronous exactly. where you have you're having for example the discussion um as a discussion forum where students type and it might be a good idea because some students need more time to process things and they can come up with better ideas and can formulate their ideas better if you give them time and they can type them so or second life for me i had a blended course because the live session was in second life but then there were tasks to do in Moodle um, afterwards. For example, write about your experience in Second Life. Which world did you visit? What happened? Who did you meet, for example? Um, I had a blended course where I was in the face-to-face -face classroom with taxi drivers, but then I came home and recorded the dialogues we came up with, and they could download them on their phones and listen while they were waiting for... Um, for you know for people to take a ride but because as you know taxi drivers have to wait a lot <laughs> if they're unlucky so there are actually diff many different modes and some people are even saying that experts that the term blended learning might become redundant because now people come up with all these different ways of doing blended learning so that some say it's just different methodologies you mix as blended learning 
So if you, if you go that route, then you would say, well, all the teaching we are doing is in a way blended if you want to. Uh, you set homework, for example, your face-to-face -face class, but then you set homework uh, for students to do at home. Yeah. I was getting a, a kind of a chuckle because um, I, I, some colleagues we were talking about having a conference and one was like, uh, should we meet on uh, uh, Google? And then there was, no, no, let's do Skype. No, let's do Zoom. Like we, you know, we have so many different ways to communicate now and everybody's kind of finding their, you know, what they like um, the most. But the reason why I think Zoom has kind of become the most popular is because of the recording option. Like it, right now, this conversation has been recorded since we started, right? I don't believe um, any, uh, for sure Google doesn't do that. Skype doesn't, you can't record this long, right? So this is a really good, um, I, I can't imagine somebody going back and listening to uh, uh, most conversations, but you, you have them recorded for legal purposes, for um, referring back to what you learned. Uh, this is whoever invented, started this, uh, this Zoom was pretty clever. And do you, what I really like about it is it's, uh, I've had no, I, I don't know much about the technology of any of these things. And yet I have no problem at all. Yeah, with Zoom. I agree. Great. It's it so easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you yeah. use the polling or the breakout rooms as well? Well, actually, I was thinking about that earlier because you said uh, when you get your students to work with uh, in Google Docs, let's say, and you and have them go and talk to each other. Yes, you can do that. You can uh, you can set up breakout rooms. What, are, what is that? What, it, what is what's a breakout? Two, the, it's a feature in Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, when you see the menu bar, there's one called breakout room. Um, um, well, I learned the hard way, though, that I because I thought I could group the students, um, but actually you have to know like their logins, and I think my my students don't have I think a regular login um, mm. very often, so um, it's just a random setting. So when I say make the rooms, I could say you know make seven rooms, and it just automatically divides them up. Oh and, wow! And, and then they go off, and I can't hear them, but I can pop in and out to so that it's like the small group discussion. So they're in these. You know, you can set it for yeah. how many students that you want. So they'll be Amazing. doing some discussion tasks and come back. But the polling feature, it's really simple. You can't do very much this multiple choice, but that's also, I think, been a nice way to, um, you know, I can ask a few questions and then we can look at the results and then talk a bit mm -hmm. about. You know. Pretty impressive. Hey, Vance, I think I'm going to get a. Uh, I still have to work tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> We're supposed to be on at uh, 7.15, uh, 7.15 yes. to 3.15. We are uh, supposed to be on and I do, I get up and I, I log in right away and start, I go on a seesaw, start checking the kids' work. Mm -hmm. So um, it is getting kind of late, so. Um, yeah, I was, I was just trying to set up a poll here in the background. Launch polling, okay, yeah, I gotta launch a poll. Here we go, all right. Here's huh. a poll for you. Oh, capital yes, lowercase <laughs> yes. <laughs> that should be yes All right. some like oh, after yes. Well, I, All right. I, don't, I don't know how what your definition of fun is because there's <laughs> other things that are more fun, but I found this yeah. was in, was interesting and nice to see um see, you know, see your faces and hear different um different views on things and different levels that we teach and yeah. Well, thanks yeah, it's, it's, for it's doing I, think. I don't mean to end it all for everybody, by the way. I was just no, going to sneak we've, out. We've been going an hour and a half now. So wow. it's getting to be a long I've recording. Been in, I've been in Zoom now for oh, going, yeah. on, going on four hours. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh, you need a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually had a picnic earlier and the walk, so <laughs> this was a... Uh, yeah. A yeah, you're in nice Turkey. Day. So it's, yeah, it's I mean, daylight for you. Yeah. Um, so it's not dark yet, mm -hmm. but uh, it's very it's been interesting really to hear from, from your experience. I can just imagine how difficult it is if you're just told now tomorrow you have to teach because I, as I said, I've been into technology for very long and I've had training in how to do good online learning, good blended learning and so on. But if you have had no training, no experience and you have responsibility responsibility for your students I can really imagine and I, I assume this is just everybody sees this as an emergency situation but if this was going on for longer 
um, you you would need uh, training uh, how to how to yeah yeah okay well thank you very much you've all participated in a learning together session uh, episode 442 <laughs> and this is the uh, 9th of March 2020 and this is a very wonderful group of people here Bonnie Don Susan and Nergis and myself Vance and thank you Vance uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming. And, hu and hugs to that other half of yours. Yeah, I don't know why she, we couldn't get her to show her face here. <laughs> I think she multitasked. Hello, everyone. Oh, there she is. Uh, there right. she is. Hi. Yeah, that's Bobby, my Lovely wife. Lovely to Bobby. see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you're. Well, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye. 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 My first task is to end the recording and. I'm going to do that now. Okay. Yep. Bye.